speech, I want you all to close your eyes. I know it's redundant, but just stay with me. Close your eyes and imagine you're in a spaceship. Now we're on Earth, where no problem has been tackled. But like all spaceships, our goal is to blast off and reach the glorious world of the stars, where I'll make you aware of a seemingly unnoticeable, but very vital and important ability you may haven't noticed you've had before. Now, let's start our engines, buckle up our seat belts, and let's ascend into the intro sphere. The 26th of April, 1986. You're having dinner with your family, discussing each other's days. Your children are telling you a silly story from school when all of a sudden, there's an alarm that goes off on the radio. It's a warning? Vnimanje, vnimanje. Vnimanje, vnimanje. Du vahi žiteli pripjatja. Miska rada povidomljaja, što će res avariju v Černobilski elektrostanciji v misti pripjatja. Po hirošjutce radioaktivni umovi v okolstvjah. Your children are scared. They're clinging to your feet, begging you for answers, asking you, are we going to be okay? Are we going to survive the nuclear power plant explosion? I'm assuming is a picture a lot of you may get in your heads when I say the word nuclear, chaos, destruction, when in reality, it's quite the opposite, entering the thesis sphere. As we progress as a civilization, our inextinguishable hunger for energy grows as well. Supplying ourselves with the power necessary to fulfill our desires is becoming quite the task. While global warming is in its peak, we tend to turn to cleaner ways to produce energy. Or so we're made to believe. Many of us are pointing the finger at pollution towards nuclear power plants. And can you blame us? We've seen what toxic waste could do to the environment. Plus, radiation has caused the death of thousands all around the globe. It is irrefutable. The radioactivity is terrible for the human well-being. Well, if it escapes out of the reactor, that is. Today, I'm here to shed light on the truth about nuclear energy with no filter, no corruption, and no selectivity. Entering the roadmap sphere. Today, you're with me here on the space frenzy ride as you try to reach the outer cosmos. You've already passed the first two layers of my oratory, but the hard part is yet to come, as in the cause of the problem sphere, I'll debunk some misconceptions about nuclear energy and give you just a few examples why it rocks. Then, to terminate the toxic mindset that the world should stay away from nuclear power, I'll propose to you some of the many reasons why we should implement it as our potential main energy source. And lastly, I'll address and give solutions to the ever-growing problem of selectivity in news outlets and how it affects our survivability. Entering the co problem causes sphere. Nuclear power. The controversial energy giant, they give birth to numerous stereotypes about mutated freaks, extra limbs, and deformed glowing reptiles. For decades, the atomic age has been shrouded, nay, engulfed, nay, sh showered in a deep mist of misconceptions, held together by a hodgepodge of Soviet-era horror films. Since it's so trendy to hate a nuclear energy, this begs the question, where would we be without it? Well, an article published by the United States Energy Information Administration answers just this question. Well, it's nice to imagine rolling green hills, wind turbulence, and solar panel fields. The truth is that most of our energy will and currently does come from coal and the burning of other fossil fuels. But how do we become so dependent on nuclear energy? According to an article published on the site nuclearhistory.com, it all started in the early 1940s. When the bombs that were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nuclear power promised to be a peaceful alternative to the new technology, helping the world get back on its feet. And believe me when I say, everybody and their mama's imagination was running wild because of the many possibilities that nuclear power provided, such as cheaper and cleaner energy. Sadly, as it turns out, getting physics to work in real life was hard, and there was a nuclear die-out, so to say. Until the early 1970s, where prices of fossil fuels that were the standard back then skyrocketed. So the scrap technology was adopted once again. Only there were hardly any improvements that took place. The blueprints of it were virtually the same. The plan was simple. Build as many reactors as we can so we don't become bankrupt. Nevertheless, it was irrefutable that technology was hard at best. It was flawed at best. <sighs> But according to the World and Energy Information Administration, over 50% of all nuclear power plants were built between the years 1970 and 1985. And because so many were built in such little time, there were hardly any air inspections that took place between these 15 short years. That is why all meltdowns of nuclear energy reactors are of reactors that have been constructed between these 15 years. And of course, angry baby boomers did 
what angry baby boomers do best. They blew things out of proportion, saying that nuclear energy can never, ever, forever be used because it was too risky. Okay, boomer. But at the time, they were right. At the time. Now, things are different. According to the Institute of Nuclear Energy, the United States, States is developing cutting-edge advanced reactors that have an unprecedented versatility. The reactors can be paired up with renewable energy sources, are much less expensive, burn waste as fuel, and are walk-away safe. Additionally, according to the Environment and Public Works Committee, one of the pros of nuclear energy is that it produces 70% of our carbon-free electricity, 20% of the world's electricity, while in contrast, wind and solar power plants produce only 6% of our carbon-free electricity and only two minuscule percent of our the world's electricity. In addition, according to the Office of Nuclear Energy, the United States avoided releasing, between the years 1970 and 2016, more than 15 billion metric tons of poisonous gases that contribute to smog, acid rain, lung cancer, and cardiovascular diseases. We're almost there, entering the solution sphere. The problem with people thinking that nuclear power is dangerous originates from media exaggerations. For some ungodly reason, they want us to think that the only way to produce clean energy is by wind, solar, and water power plants, when in actuality, that's not the case. According to the World Health Organization, in 2016, the deaths of, new, uh, of air pollution in 2016 alone were, between, were well above 7 million, and the deaths of nuclear emissions from the year 1940 to 2016 I'm talking bombs, meltdowns, disasters, everything, between 150 and 250,000. What does that lead me to believe? Will we leave fossil fuel power plants, be silent murderers, we make nuclear death emissions loud and clear, and what can we do to stop them? Education. Educate yourself, and especially educate the youth. Incorporating the education of nuclear energy in our school systems is essential for the change we want to make in society. So much of our fear comes from not really understanding nuclear power. And if we incorporate it in a thoughtful and factual way for the youth, we can eradicate most of the myths surrounding it as the youth is our future. We should not be afraid to be skeptics. Decide what's not, what not, not what's best for us now, but for the future as well. And only then will we be able to free ourselves from the web of lies the media has created to trap us in. Drop the engines. We've arrived. Can you feel it? Mm. <laughs> the star, you can see the star of Nebulae. We're in the cosmos, an array of endless possibilities, and we're the masters of our future. Now, every decision we make matters, fluctuating the path that our future generations will take. What an incredible ability to have, being the masters of ourselves. And tell me, would you like to use your newly found ability to sh engulf our children in poisonous gases? or provide them with a clean and reliable energy source. Thank you.